Mount X is 9 kilometers from Mount Y on a bearing 146 degrees. Mount Z is 14 kilometers away from Mount X and on a bearing 072 degrees from Mount Y. Find the bearing of X from Z. It's important to understand that the bearing of 146 degrees is from Mount Y onto Mount X. And so when we start drawing, we need to start with Y. So it's useful always to draw a set of perpendicular lines to represent the north, south, and east, west directions like this. So the central point here is what we can consider to be y. x is 9 kilometers from y on a bearing 146 from y. And so we're going to try to estimate 146 starting from the north direction, like this. So perhaps up to about this point. Now from that point, let's draw a line that represents the bearing from y to x. Let's assume that this is 9 kilometers and therefore the point down here is x. The next piece of information says that Mount Z is 14 kilometers away from x and on a bearing 072 from Mount Y. Once again, the reference point is mentioned as Mount Y. So we are going to now get a bearing, once again from the north, of about 72 degrees. Let's say that's an estimate of 72 degrees. And let's draw a line from here to obtain the position of X. So let's say that's the point which we can then call x. At point x, let's draw the two perpendicular lines as before. North, south and east, west. Let's label them. The question says, find the bearing of X from Z. And so, I'm sorry, this is not X, this is Z, because we have X down at the bottom. Let's now draw a line that connects Z and X. So we have a triangle X, Y, Z. The question being asked is to find the bearing of X from Z, which is really this angle that you see me drawing here. That is the bearing that's required. So to get that angle, we have to see if we know any other angles that are connected with that. Well, there's one easy angle here, which you can see the little one. That angle, as you would know, is 180 degrees. So if we can find the tiny angle down here, then we can add that to 180, and that would give us the bearing that we're looking for. Let's look at the diagram to see if there's any other information we can glean. Now look at the 72 degrees, and let's then also look at the angle here. You can see that these two angles marked in blue are alternate interior angles to the two vertical uh, axes which represent the north direction. And so that angle is also 72 degrees, the big angle here. Let me write it on the outside. So this is 72 degrees. Now you can see that if you can then find the inside angle here, which we can call Z, angle Z, 
and you subtract angle Z from 72, that gives you the little angle that we were looking for. So let's label that as 72 minus Z. Our next job would be to, would be to find Z. You can use either the law of sines or cosines. Let's see. Is there any other information we can glean from the triangle that we have here? Well, look at the first bearing, the, the one on the left. That angle, which I'll write on the outside, was 146 degrees, which was given in the problem. Since the angle in blue is 72, then the remaining angle here inside the triangle, which is really angle Y, is 146 minus 72 which gives you 74 degrees. There is possibly no other information other than the fact that the distance from X to Z is 14 kilometers as given in the problem. So now let's reproduce this triangle to make it easy to use, uh, you know, one of the laws that uh, are applicable. So let's quickly redraw this triangle here on the side as best we can it doesn't have to be exactly a, a, a copy of the first one but we do need to have the values the same so let me write that as 14 9 74 degrees and let's label these as y x z remember that we're trying to find angle Z. Since this triangle XYZ has got two sides and a non-included angle, you can use the law of sines to find angle Z. So how do we use the law of sines? Well, let's take a Z for sure. So let's start with sine Z divided by little z, which is the side opposite sine Z. And it, it does help to label these parts. So I'm going to label them. This is small z. The 14 is small y because it's opposite the angle y. And of course, the side opposite x is little x. So coming back to the equation that we are writing, sine z by z can be written, uh, can be equated to something that you know, sine y by y. Now let's substitute whatever values we know. So sine z divided by 9 okay, will be equal to sine 74 degrees divided by 14. So now let's just move 9 over to the other side by multiplying both sides by 9. So sine z will be equal to 9 times sine 74 divided by 40. You can now find in one step the value of z as sine inverse 9 sine 74 by 40. Let's put this in a bracket to just make sure that we're including all of it. If you use the calculator to find this, then you'll find that the answer for Z is 38.167 degrees. Now remember that the bearing that you wanted was simply equal to 180 plus 72 minus z. Okay, so let's write that down then. So the bearing that you want, here, let's write it here. Okay, the bearing was equal to 180 
plus 72 minus 38.167. Notice that I'm not simplifying. We want to do that only at the very end. So this answer comes to be 213.83 degrees. And this is the required bearing. Remember to give your answers to two decimal places if not asked otherwise.